This is chapter one from Scat. The day before Mrs. Starch vanished, her third grade biology students trudged silently, as always, into the classroom. Their expressions reflected the usual mix of dread and melancholy, for Mrs. Starch was the most feared teacher at the Truman School. When the bell rang, she unfolded stiffly like a crane and rose to her full height of nearly six feet. In one hand, she twirled a sharpened teochondric number two pencil, a sure sign of trouble to come. Nick glanced across the aisle at Marta Gonzalez. Her brown eyes were locked on Mrs. Starch, and her thin elbows were planted like fence posts. Pinning her biology book open to chapter eight, Nick had left his own textbook in his locker, and his palms were sweating. Good morning, people said Mrs. Starch in a tone so mild it was chilling. Who's prepared to tell me about the Calvin cycle? Only one hand rose. It belonged to Graham, who always claimed to know the answers, but never did. Mrs. Starch hasn't called on him since the first week of class. The Calvin cycle, she repeated. Anybody? Marta looked as if she might throw up again. The last time that had happened, Mrs. Starch had barely waited until the floor was mopped before instructing Marta to write a paper listing five major muscles used in the act of regurgitation. Nick and the other students had been blown away. What kind of teacher would punish a kid for puking? By now, Mrs. Starch was saying, the photosynthesis process should be familiar to all of you. Marta gulped hard twice. She had been having nightmares about Mrs. Starch, who wore her dyed blonde hair piled to one side of her head, like a beach dune. Mrs. Starch's school wardrobe never varied. A polyester pantsuit in one of her four faded pastel colors, a drab brown flats. She painted heavy violet makeup on her eyelids, yet she made no effort to conceal an old crimson mark on her chin. The mark was the shape of an anvil and the subject of wild speculation, but nobody had gotten up a nerve to ask Mrs. Starch about it. Marta's eyes flickered miserably towards Nick and then back up to the teacher. Nick was fond of Marta, although she wasn't sure if she liked her, if he liked her enough to sacrifice himself to Mrs. Starch. Who had begun to pace? She was scanning the class, selecting a victim. A droplet of perspiration glided like a spider down Nick's neck. If he had worked up the courage to raise his hand, Mrs. Starch would pounce swiftly. Right away, she'd see that he had forgotten his biology book, a crime that would be forgiven only if Nick was able to explain and then diagram the Calvin cycle, which was unlikely. Nick was still struggling to figure out the Krebs cycle from chapter seven. Plants, as we all know, are vital to human existence, said Mrs. Starch on patrol. And without the Calvin cycle, plants would not exist, could not exist. Graham was waving his arm and squirming like a puppy. The rest of the class prayed that Mrs. Starch would call on him, but she acted as if he were invisible. Abruptly, she spun to a halt in front of Marta's row. Marta sat rigidly in the second desk behind a brainy girl named Libby, who knew all about the Calvin cycle, all about everything, but seldom made a peep. The chart on page 167, Mrs. Starch went on, makes it all plain as day. It's an excellent illustration and one that you are likely to encounter on a test. Quite likely. Marta lowered her head, a tactical mistake. The movement, slight as it was, caught Mrs. Starch's attention. Nick sucked in a breath. His heart raced and his head buzzed because he knew it was now or never. Marta seemed to shrink under Mrs. Starch's icy gaze. Nick could see tears forming at the corner of Marta's eyes, and he halted himself for hesitating. Come on, people, snap out of your coma, Mrs. Starch chilled, tapping a pencil on Libby's desk. The Calvin cycle. The only reply was a ripping noise, Marta's trembling elbows tearing holes in the pages of her book. Mrs. Starch frowned. I was hoping for a sea of hands. She was disappointed, but once again, seems I'll have to pick a volunteer, an unwilling volunteer. As the teacher pointed her pencil at the top of Marta's head, Nick raised his hand. I'm toast, he thought. She's going to crush me like a bug. 
Lowering his eyes, he braced to hear Mrs. Starch call his name. Oh, Duane, she sang out. Great, Nick thought. She forgot who I am. But then he looked up, and he saw the teacher aiming her pencil at another kid on the side of the classroom. The mean old bird had totally faked him out and Marta too. The other kid's name really was Dwayne, and Nick knew and Nick had known him since elementary school when he was two years ahead of Nick, and had known Dwayne the Dweeb. One summer Dwayne the Dweeb grew five inches and gained thirty pounds, and from everybody and then on everybody called him Smoke. Because that's what he wanted to be called. Some kids said it's because he was a pyro. So Dwayne, Mrs. Starch said sweetly, have you finished chapter eight? Rumpled and sleepy looking, Smoke grunted and raised his eyes towards the teacher. Nick could see his expression, but the slump of his shoulders suggested a profound lack of interest. Dwayne, I guess I read it, yeah. You guess, using a thumb for two fingers, Mrs. Starch spun a yellow pencil into a blur, like a miniature airplane propeller. Under less stressful circumstances, it would have been entertaining. I read it so much, Smoke said, that I forgot which is which. Several students giggled, struggling to smother their giggles. Marta reached across the aisle, nudged Nick, and said, Thank you. Nick felt his face redden. For raising your hand, Marta whispered. Nick shrugged. No big deal, he whispered back. Mrs. Starch moved across the classroom and positioned herself beside Smoke's desk. I see you brought your biology book today, she said. Well, that's progress, Duane. I guess. But you'll find that it's much easier to read your book when it's not upside down. Mrs. Starch rotated the textbook using her eraser of her number two pencil. Smoke nodded. Yeah, that's better. He tried to flip open the book, but Mrs. Starch pressed down firmly with the pencil, holding the cover closed. No peeking, she said. Tell me how the Calvin cycle produces sugar from carbon dioxide and why that is so important to photosynthesis. Give me a minute, Smoke casually began to pick at a nasty looking zit on his meat fuzz covered neck. Mrs. Starch said, we're all waiting, which was true. The other students, including Nick and Marta, were on the edge of their seats. They were aware that something major and possibly legendary was about to occur. And though they had no clue that within 48 hours, they would each be questioned by the sheriff's deputies and asked to tell what they had seen and heard. Smoke wasn't as tall as Mrs. Starch, but he was built like a bull. His size and his attitude intimidated all of his classmates and most of his teachers, though not Mrs. Starch. When Smoke tried to flick her pencil flick her pencil off of his book, it didn't budge. He leaned back, cracked his knuckles, and said, What's the question again? Marta groaned under his breath. Nick gnawed his upper lip. The longer Smoke stalled, the worse it was going to be when Mrs. Starch lowered the boom. For the last time, she said coldly, Tell us about the Calvin cycle. Is it like a Harley? Smoke asked, and the students laughed and erupted in laughter. They grew quite quickly, grew quiet because Mrs. Starch was smiling, and Mrs. Starch never smiles. Marta covered her face. Has he got a death wish or what? She said to Nick, who had a bad feeling about the whole scene. So, Duane, it turns out you're a comedian, Mrs. Starch said, and all this time I thought you were just another dull lamp with no talent and no future. I guess, said Smoke, who had resumed probing at his flamed blemish, zit. Do you do a lot of guessing, don't you? So what? Well, I'm guessing you haven't even glanced at chapter eight, said Mrs. Starch, am I right? Yeah, and I'm also guessing that you're more interested in playing with your acne than you are about learning about photosynthesis. Smoke's hand came off his neck and dropped to his side. Looming over him, Mrs. Starch said, a teacher's job is to identify and cultivate each student's strengths and then encourage him or her to utilize those strengths in the pursuit of knowledge. There wasn't a trace of anger in her voice, which Nick found creepy. So Duane, she continued, what I'd like you to do, since you're obviously fascinated by the subject, is to write me a 500-word essay about pimples. The class cracked up again, Nick and Marta too, in spite of themselves. This time, the kids couldn't stop laughing. Mrs. Starch waited before continuing. You should start with some basic human biology about what causes your skin eruption in adolescence. There's plenty of information on the internet, Duane, so I'll expect at least three sources, citation. 
The second part of the paper should summarize a history of acne, both medically and in pop culture. And then the last section could deal with your own personal pimple, the one that you seem so enchanted with. Smoke stared darkly at Mrs. Starch. And here's the best part, Dwayne. She said, I want this essay to be funny because you're a funny fellow, an extremely funny fellow. Not me. Oh, don't be modest, Dwayne. You have everybody in stitches just a minute ago. Mrs. Starch turned her back on smoke and bobbled the pencil gaily in the air. Come on, people, what do you say? Wouldn't it be amusing for Dwayne to write a humorous essay on pimples and then read it aloud to the whole class? Nobody was giggling anymore, and even Graham had yanked down his hand. Smoke wasn't a popular kid, but it was impossible not to feel sorry for him. Mrs. Starch was beyond exceptionally brutal, even for Mrs. Starch. Marta looked queasy again, and Nick was starting to feel the same way. Smoke was a loner and definitely freaky, but never had anybody hassled him as long as he was given plenty of space. Nick, Mrs. Starch said. Nick sagged in his desk and thought, I can't believe this. Mr. Waters, are you with us today? Yes, Mrs. Starch. Be honest, wouldn't you and your classmates enjoy hearing Dwayne read his pimple paper? Nick's chin dropped to his chest. If he had answered yes, he'd risk making a mortal enemy of smoke. If he answered no, Mrs. Starch would pick on him mercilessly for the rest of the school year. He wished he could make himself faint or maybe swallow his own tongue. An ambulance ride would be, ambulance ride would be better than this. Well, Mrs. Starch prodded. Nick tried to think of something to say that would free Smoke from doing the essay and at the same time not anger Mrs. Starch. Honestly, I'd rather learn about the Calvin cycle than Dwayne's zits, he said. A few students snickered. No offense, Nick said with a lame nod to Smoke, who sat expressionless. Mrs. Starch showed no mercy. She spun around and tapped Smoke on the crown of his head. 500 words, and it's due by the end of the week. Smoke scowled. I don't think so. Excuse me? That ain't fair. Really? Is it fair for you to come to my class unprepared and hopelessly familiar with the study material to waste my time and that of your fellow students? Do you think that's fair, Dwayne? Smoke brushed his shock of jet black hair of his eyes. I apologize, Kay. Now just let it go. Mrs. Starch bent down slowly, peering like a heron about to, spe about to spear a minnow. Well, what happened to our class comedian, she said. Are you all out of jokes? I guess. Well, that's too bad because I expect 500 hilarious words double spaced. No way, Smoke said. Mrs. Starch positioned the tip of the pencil so that it was even with the tip of his nose. Way, she said. Nick looked anxiously at Marta, who had closed her biology book and laid his head upon the desk. Smoke took a swat at the pencil, but Mrs. Starch jerked it away. Get out of my face, he said, or else you'll be sorry. Is that a threat, Dwayne? Mrs. Starch sounded too worried. Smoke said, ain't a threat, it's a fact. No, here's a fact. One more, once more, she leveled her pencil at his nose. You will write a 500-word essay about pimples, and you will read it out loud to us, or you will fail this class, and you will have to take it again. Do you understand? Smoke crossed his eyes and stared down the yellow shaft of Mr. S Mrs. Starch's number two pencil. I guess, he said. Then he calmly chomped the pencil in half, chewed up the graphite along with the splinters, and swallowed the whole mouthful with a husky gulp. Mrs. Starch backed away, eyeing with alarm the moist stump of wood that remained in her fingers. Nobody else in the room moved a muscle except for Smoke who dropped his biology book into his camo pattern backpack, stood up, and ambled out the door. End of chapter one.